So what is now officially confirmed to be America's most awkward wingman in politics, Joe Biden is apparently trying to sell the American public on the economy to boost his own legacy or his ego rather, and to help Kamala Harris's campaign against Donald Trump. Well, why is this important? Donald Trump has been leading Kamala on the economy and Joe before her this entire time. And the margin has been getting worse recently, as obviously people know for a fact the economy is not where it was when Trump was president prior to the virus. That being said, there's a lot of different reasons why this might be the case, that Kamala is trying to invoke Joe to see what he can do to help her out. Now, you might say Joe literally has sundowning that if you were to call Joe Biden at 7 p.m., he could forget who you are by the time you finish telling him that he forgot to turn off uh, the stove. OK, I mean, like he's that gone. But. He somehow has more charisma and more riz than uh, than Kamala Harris. I don't know how the hell that's possible, but it's true. It's true. Um, and so at that point, and you know, you need not look any further than when he had the MAGA hat on for two seconds. Okay, he knew exactly how to appease the people in the crowd that were MAGA, and so he at least has some sensibilities while they're leaving him. He still has a little bit of a pulse left. So this might be. A desperate Hail Mary for the Kamala campaign to refocus the energy over the economy as she's being pelted and felted over this exact topic for what has been the better part of two months up to this point, and it's been getting worse. Recently, Jerome Powell of the Fed has promised to cut the rates another, I think, quarter of a percentage point, which is supposed to ease the economy, which is like a cheat code for having a better economic performance in the short term. Even then, the S&P and other factors like the Dow have not really reacted too crazily, as obviously most people see this for what it is, but a BS political move. And if not even that, it's still a very nice coincidence for the Kamala campaign. But this is not likely to fix their uh, the root of the issues, as Kamala would say, as borders are. I'm going to fix the root of the issues with immigration, <laughs> which is ridiculous because it's like, it's like you're trying to pull the root of the weed as it's sprouting in your eyes and you're cutting yourself on the thorns of this weed infestation called the immigration crisis. Anyway, with that tangent out of the way, let's get on to what Biden's planning to do to fix the economy, which is ironic because the guy's been there for the better part of four years. Who would have thought he fixed it? You know, maybe $5 trillion of spending later, American Rescue Plan and my, you know, other infrastructure BS. You would have thought, uh, he, you know, things would be fine. Apparently, he's going to fix it again with the Republican Congress. Let's see how that works out. You know, here's really the secret sauce as to why they're shipping out Biden. A refurbished tablet to say the least okay i mean <laughs> biden right now is like a refurbished 2011 ipad first generation oh god imagine using one of those nowadays anyway the point being is that the working class voters oh god i'm having a biden moment too <clears throat> The working class of voters Biden crafted his agenda to help out the most have been among the hardest to convince of, it, of its benefits doesn't that tell you everything you need to know by the way folks so basically they're saying that the people that Joe Biden went over in 2020 over Trump uh, are not really coming back to the plantation. In fact, they're sticking out a new path. And by that, I mean tracking back to their vote for Trump that they probably shared in 2016. So think about it this way. There was a crop of people that voted for Obama in 2008, 2012, Trump in 16, Biden in 20. And then they're not going to vote for Harris. And so Biden's like, Oh, you know, they voted for me four years ago before they knew that I needed an adult diaper. And so, you know, I still am going to schmooze my way back in to get him back for Kamala. Not going to happen, but I could see what they're trying to go for here, at least. So, I, I mean, that explains it. And as you can see here, they're going to try to go to communities, according to the article, that are seeing positive effects of the Biden administration's policies. And, of, of course, Kamala is going to put her name on that, too. But you see what the angle is. They promised, you know, let's say we're going to help 10 million people, you know, a thousand neighborhoods, but they've probably delivered on like a small fraction of that because obviously government spending generally is not the best idea. And so they sold you a bunch of baloney and are we surprised? Anyway, the point being is that they're probably going to go to like the three little towns and suburbs where actually his projects have done something positive. Uh, never mind the inflation, the debt. Okay, never mind that, but like, let's just look at this little quaint town. And he's going to try to do that as a photo op. And that might work if you're stupid, but it probably won't work for the swing voter. Here's another good uh, slice of good news uh, for the Trump campaign. So in an August Gallup poll, which are pretty, pretty historically solid, just 31% of Americans said the economy was getting better. And that was representing something as an improvement over compared to the last three years. So think about it. 31% is the high point of the economy in the past few years. So only one third of voters are saying that we're in a good direction. Mind you, about 50% of people are going to vote for Kamala no matter what. 
So that means that there's like two fifths of Kamala voters that are voting for somebody who they acknowledge is not fixing the economy right now. Anyway, bottom line is that they're going to try to salvage this because obviously you want the majority of people to think the economy is doing better. In fact, when Donald Trump lost in 2020, even after the lockdowns and like everything that artificially shut down the economy and made it look bad on paper, his economic standing was still a lot better insofar as Gallup polling was than the measly 31% of Kamala and Joe. But they're still going to try to reheat Joe out of the microwave as if he's not going to be coming out soggy and dilapidated. <laughs> and it's not going to work. So here's a problem with uh, a lot of the fundamentals of the Democratic promise, right? So they face the issue of infrastructure bills that don't really see the light of day until like several years down the line. But they have an election that was maybe two years removed from the actual spending bills that were initiated. And so they probably have like eight Tesla chargers and that's about it, you know, to show for it. And, you know, this quote from Biden last week in Michigan actually makes a lot of sense given the sort of prognosis. But he says, we're not going to see this progress for a little bit because it takes time to build those factories. But there are going to be millions of people working in those factories. And guess what? Once that starts, they're going to create entire communities around them. So he's telling you right now, yeah, and he's not going to admit this and Kamala won't either. But the inflation's out of control. The unemployment isn't great. Everything sucks, immigration, but give it another 10 years of you suffering with all this crappy stuff, and then there will be factories, I promise. So once Biden is in a tomb or otherwise mentally is in one, you know, in 2030, we're going to see different things, flying cars, everything's going to be great. People doubt it, and people don't even care if it's true, because Donald Trump can, it's not like he's going to delete the infrastructure bill or anything, so everything that's already being built by Biden will be continued under Trump. And he's also going to cut the taxes and everything. So why the hell are you going to vote for Biden or, sorry, Harris, when Trump's going to give you the best of both worlds? Like, get it through your skull, guys. I know that what I just said, most people haven't ever contemplated. In fact, I just made it up on the spot. But isn't that a genius reason for a swing voter to vote, let's say, Biden in 20 and then Trump in 24? You get the spending and the cut taxes. I know that isn't the healthiest for the economy, but that's the way the cake is baked right now. So anyway. So that article ended saying that uh, Joe Biden is apparently going to ramp up his public speaking schedule to go to like different factories are going to open up power plants, whatever, which is, you know, just opening the floodgates for more gaffes. So I'm here for it. Thank you very much for the free content. Biden campaign. You're awesome. You, you can thank Ron Klain also who works with them uh, for hyping him up. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> doofus. Anyway, we're going to wrap up the video with this. Okay. This is what they're begging you to ignore. This is what the Democrats really want you to like pretend isn't existent. You know, it, it, it's like, I don't know, trying to sway, <laughs> trying to sway people on the economy being a great thing right now is kind of like being five or six months pregnant saying that you're not like, unless you're a really fat chick, it's pretty obvious. Okay. Like the stomach dropped at that point, probably. It's a viable baby. You cannot lie to me. <laughs> You're pregnant. You're cooked. This economy is so bad. Are you kidding me? Look at the debt. The revenue is nowhere close to the spending. Awful stuff. Oh, my God. I honestly was going to make a video just on this debt clock in and of itself. But frankly, it would take forever. Like, seriously, it would take two hours of just pure spurging, pure nerding over all this sort of stuff. But all this debt, I mean, it's kind of stressful. So I'm going to just end the video here as I do not want you guys to be like, oh, my God, we owe $270,000 per taxpayer and $104,000 per citizen. That is awful in the top left. That is gruesome, like Gavin Newsom. Anyways, I'll leave you all with that one. This economic push is not going anywhere, and God hoping Trump will win. So anyways, see you all in the next one. Adios.